Hi there. Today we're going to be going through a demonstration of SHL KPS integration uh, as an integration between NetSuite and Codit Paperflex. I've currently logged into my NetSuite account where we're using the KPF integration and I've got two different levels of access within here as different roles and I'm going to start off in here in a manufacturing role. As an overview of the KPF integration, it provides an integration between NetSuite and Cody Paperflex, allowing for the association and uh, design and creation of label templates in NetSuite, associating those to different item records in NetSuite, and then also producing the labels from within NetSuite based on dynamic content from the records from within NetSuite as well. So we can produce label templates with dynamic content areas that then when produced from a record in NetSuite are populated from that record. In my manufacturing role, I'm greeted by my manufacturing dashboard. And initially I'm going to go to a, a preset up item record that I've got within the system. So we can see here if I put an item I get through a an item SEI 00001 seismograph. And that's just using the global search functionality within NetSuite to find this preset of item. Now this item record is a serialized assembly or bill of materials item. Now the functionality we're going to be shown from within NetSuite today is available on inventory item and assembly or bill of materials items within NetSuite, uh, both as standard items as well as the lot numbered and serialized options. And it will also be available on work orders, which we'll move on to later on in the demonstration. So on our, our item record now, we've got different fields on the screen that we'd see as standard within NetSuite. Um, so things like our item name, our description, and our UPC code. And we can also see our unit types and subsidiaries and different accounts. The main point on here as a, as a customization that comes with the KPF integration is we have a KPF subtab. And under the KPF subtab, we can see here we have a sublist of label templates under the KPF item label template sublist. We can have multiple templates associated with a single item, so there is no limit on templates. And we again, it's available on the assembly of bill of materials and the inventory items, including perhaps a lot more materialized inventory. And the options on here are just editable in line, so when editing the record, you'll be able to select those, and we'll show those later on on the work order process. So we can associate one or more templates with a record, and then at the top of the screen, we've got our print label button. And now when we choose to print the label, that will produce each label that's associated with this record. It will produce a PDF of that label with the dynamic content from the record that I'm on in next week. So when we click that print label, it will contact um, Code with Paperflex and work with Paperflex to make sure that that label is generated and to populate the dynamic content from the NetSuite. We can see there, I've got a download from there, and we can see the item name is the start of that, and then the, the template name is Code Medical. And I can click OK just to open that file now to see that PDF. And we can see here we've got a, a predefined PDF template. And the main point of this at the moment is that we've got dynamic content from here based on mainly the UPC code and barcode that we've put on here. So that's both that's the UPC code as a text value based on what was on the record, and also the barcode has been produced based on that same UPC one. So those are both examples of dynamic content on this particular label template. What we're going to do next is we're going to so that's the item setup, but we're going to move on now through into the work order process. So we're going to navigate now to go and create a new work order. And under inventory, manage manufacturing, we're going to go and enter a work order. So as we've seen so far, we can set up the label template on an item level and then can produce those for the particular items. But as part of the manufacturing process with work orders in NetSuite, we'll also be able to produce templates for a work order. And that might have different content, such as lot numbers um, that have been produced um, for start and end times and things like that. 
production and dates and, and things are valid to. So now we've got our work order, what we're going to start off with is setting our subsidiary. Uh, subsidiary fields, the standard NetSuite are available in NetSuite One World accounts, which are NetSuite's multi currency instances. So I need to set a subsidiary in this account, and then I can go and set the rest of the information. We're going to choose an assembly as the assembly we've just been working with, so SCI 00001 as our seismograph. I'm going to leave my quantity as 1. You can see here I've got a number of these component items of this back ordered, and that populates my component on the net so it automatically calculates the quantity needed. And again, this is all standard net suite uh, on the work order record of, up until we come to the KPF sub tab. And this is now where we're associating label templates with this work order. So under the KPF sub tab, we've got KPF work order label template sublist. And this is where we can choose our label templates that are applicable. So under the select options on here, we can see I've only got one template that I've set up in my system is valid, and that's the coded medical template. So I'm going to choose that template and click Add on there to associate that template to this record. I can associate that multiple times if I wish, including associating the record, the same template itself, multiple times, or associating a different template. And I'm now going to choose to save that work order. So as part of the KPF integration here, all we've done with an extra sub tab on there is the KPF, and we can select there and associate templates with a work order record and an item record as we've already seen. And we can see this particular work order as an example, this particular assembly item we're using has actually got sub assemblies that need building. So that's created sub work orders for us. But what I'm concerned with now is I'm going to go back to that work order we've just created, which is the top level work order, work order 290. Now on that work order, we'll be able to see all the data I've just entered, as well as be able to see the template associated with that work order, again, as I've just entered. And what we can do from there, similar functionality to the item record, so we'll be able to print labels from here, as well as all the standard work order processes in NetSuite, such as creating a bill, printing the bill of materials, printing the production schedule. So we can see, as we said, it's for the assembly SEI 00001, and under the KPF sub tab, we've got that one template associated as Coded Medical. So I'm now going to choose the print label button on here. Again, similar functionality to the item record where we're going to, it's going to work with Paperflex as a product to go and produce that content with dynamic, produce the template with dynamic content from NetSuite. We can see we've got that with the work order name at the start, and then the dash, and then the template name that we've used. And I'm going to choose to open that PDF name as well. And we can see in this example that the barcode number and barcode themselves will be generated based on the item record uh, and the UPC code we saw earlier. And the lot number in this case has also been populated as well as a work order number, so we can see 290. And we've also got the production end date generated in NetSuite automatically for us, and that's been set on here as well. There's no limit to the values that we can set on these records, and we will come on to how we map these fields um, from within NetSuite into the different label templates a little bit later on. So that's the association and production of labels from within NetSuite. And that's generally what a normal employee would see as they're in their day-to-day -day work. It doesn't change any process in NetSuite other than associated templates and the print label functionality is already available on some of these records in NetSuite. It's standard functionality, but now we're overriding that to use the KPF integration. So next, I'm going to go into a full access role, and we're going to go and look at some of the configuration options and the template designer specifically, KPF. So in a full access role, I'm greeted with my full access dashboard. And this is the functionality I'm going to be showing here is available in both administrator and full access roles. And the main section under here is we've got a KPF navigation tab, and we can see we've got different levels in here. So we've got configuration, mapping, and template designer, 
as well as some licensing information of a license overview user manager. Brief points on the user manager is that the KPF integration is licensed per user, which means that for the integration to be used by a particular user in the system, they will have to be registered in the user manager. And the first thing I'm going to go to in here now is the template designer. So under the template designer, we've got a single link of template designer. And if I navigate to that now, that will give me a screen from within NetSuite um, that actually allows me to use the Paperflex template designer, as we can see here. Now this is the account that I've previously set up to work with this, um, for Paperflex to work with NetSuite, and we'll come on to that in a little while. But in this instance, we can see that I've actually got four templates in my template designer, but within NetSuite I've only been able to see one, and that's because we can filter these down by category for what's applicable within NetSuite. Now the first thing I'm going to do is choose the coded medical template that we've been working with so far. We can see that loads up my templates for me. Again, all from within NetSuite. I've got all this access within NetSuite. And the things we want to look at on here is actually we can look at label template properties via the icon on the top of the page. And we've also we've got different things on here for the page, such as the name, category it's against, and the category is what used in NetSuite to actually filter down what's applicable to be used in NetSuite. Hence, because I've got a category of production on here, I've set that within my NetSuite account to be applicable to be selected on item and work order records. We've also got our other options in here for this template, such as the size of the template uh, as a default margin, etc. Second element to the template that we can use within NetSuite is obviously our components of the template and then how we populate those in NetSuite. So if I choose my barcode, you can see when I hover over that, I get the B code 128 option come up. And that's because that set is in the properties on the right hand side, we can see that set as the name. And the name property is what's required from within NetSuite to be able to populate this value. In some instances, people may use the name fields. If they're representing a particular value in NetSuite, it may be easier to just use the field ID from within NetSuite, uh, as in the case of this one here, uh, the cusp body prod date quality. And that exactly matches the field ID within NetSuite, whereas the barcode field as code 128 um, is its own unique name. Names don't have to be unique to each component. So we've got code 128 as the barcode field Itself, and we've also got it underneath uh, as a text field, which is why we're also seeing the barcode produced as well as the, the text value being produced underneath of the UPC code. And if, that, if the name of a property is used more than once, it will, that all the instances of it will be populated. It is possible to have predefined components set up within your coded Paperflex account. So if you've got fields that you use quite often, such as item names, or the UPC code fields that again are referenced to NetSuite field internal IDs, uh, then they're possible to be added as templates, um, and they can just be dragged and dropped onto here, automatically populated with the field ID from NetSuite. So that covers off our template designer, similar to what we'd already have within, what would be functionality we'd already have within Paperflex, just available from within NetSuite. The next thing we want to go on to is mapping, and specifically field mapping under here. So I'm going to go and view a list of my field mappings. Now field mappings are used to configure the variable values that are set on labels per record type. So we can see here I've got for specific record types, I've got specific values set, such as my serialized assembly or bill of materials items, a UPC code that's populated from next week's UPC code field to the decode 128 field in the label template, and that's why when we produced that label, that was the only value that was populated. Whereas on a work order record, we can see I'm using from an item record, I'm using the, the barcode field being populated, and we were also populating the transaction ID of the work order to a field called tran ID uh, on the label, and the end date thing is done to the production end date as well. Now I can actually go and view these records or edit these records from within here. If I go and edit one of these, what we get is actually we get a list of all these different options 
Um, these aren't entered on the fact of you, you have to know the next switch internal ID. Uh, in some of these instances, it will be that there are actually a drop down field of fields on a record. So we can see I've chosen to edit the item one here, and we've come straight to through a wizard. Uh, our record type step has been checked and choose to edit a record, and we're told to change the record type. And then we've got a field mapping option, record type of work order, and we can see the item one here is the one I've set. And what's important in this case is actually I've set a NetSuite field ID of item and a paperflex property name to be populated as BK128. However, I've got a lookup record type in this instance. And what this allows me to do is actually reference a field value in NetSuite that holds a reference to an actual record in NetSuite, such as the item does for the assembly within work order. And then what that allows me to do is look up a value from that record type itself. So what I'm saying here is I want to get the value of the item record, but I'm going to go and look up something for that item record on an assembly record. And then I'm going to populate the B code 128 value in paperflex template with that value. And if I try to edit one of these lines and when I click OK, if there is a, a lookup record type set, it will bring up my configure field mapping lookup window. And this allows me to set the field values on the lookup record, which I want to populate through the paperflex's template. So what we can see here is we've got the record type selected, the assembly of the materials as I've selected on the line. The next week field I need to reference is internal ID because that's the value that will be in the item field within next week. And the value that I want to get out of that record uh, and out of this assembly record in particular is I want to get the UPC code field, uh, which we can see I can choose from a drop down the fields available on the, uh, on the item record, and that will populate my next week internal ID for the paperflex field ID of the UPC code. So, what this allows the system to do now is it will go and get the value off the work order of the item which would return a numeric internal ID of the item record in NetSuite. And then it will go and search for the assembly record where that internal ID, as that's defined here, matches the internal ID of the work order item that we've just got. And it will go and get the UPC code field from there, and then send that back to NetSuite as part as the B code 128 value to be sent into the template. And in the further instances below, for the TRAN ID and to the end date, it's a simple field value in that so it matches the paper flex property now. So that covers off our field mapping. You can also delete the different options from within there as well on that list. Um, I'll delete them manually like I've seen, I've edited that record, and when I've gone to cancel, it's taken me to view mode of the record. We can see it's got its record type of work order, next week field ID of item, Paper flex property of barcode once away. And then we've got the lookup on the assembly record for the internal ID and the UPC code. And we can also see system notes on this record, as we can with most records in NetSuite, to see who's been changing things on this record. We can see that Dan Smith on the 29th of November changed the NetSuite field ID from assembly ID to item. And as we've seen through the demonstration, we can see that that obviously populates the values correctly. The final piece of configuration that we're going to talk about now is the Accounts Association. And this is the crux of the whole KPF integration, where this is the linking of a NetSuite account to a coded Paperflex account. We've only got one account association here active, and NetSuite would expect to only have one active Paperflex account at any one time. If there are multiple active accounts, it will only use the most recent account that's been active. Now in here we've got a name of the with the Paperflex account, which in here is KPF Demo, and that's just for reference purposes for ourselves. We've got an environment that it works with, and this can be either a production or a sandbox environment or a test environment um, that allows us to use um, the Paperflex test environment for testing purposes, um, and especially that coincides quite nicely with a sandbox environment within NetSuite. So in your sandbox environment, you may reference a Paperflex test account, and in your production environment, you may reference a Paperflex production account. From within here, then we need the domain and the public API key that are stored within Paperflex. So the domain is part, it forms part of the URL when accessing Paperflex um, outside of NetSuite. So on your initial 
credentials that are given to you to log into Paperflex. You'll be given a URL and it does form part of that URL, but is then later available and can be changed within the Paperflex product. And the public API key is also available within Paperflex under the API settings. Uh, and if there's not one there already, it can be generated and can also be regenerated at later dates if that's compromised. Um, the API key in NetSuite just needs to match that most recent public API key stored within Paperflex. And then finally, we've got categories as a sub list on the bottom of this account association. And this is where we're, we're able to filter out specific templates for use within NetSuite. So we, we've got a sub list of an unlimited number of categories that can be set just as a freeform text. We can enter a category name as we previously have with this one called production. And all we would do is enter the category name of production. And then when we go and obtain the categories that can be associated with a record, it will only go and get the categories that are applicable, that only get the templates that have got a category that's set on the account association. So in this case, any templates that have got the production category set. Again, similar to the label template association on an item and work order, this is a sub list and can have an unlimited number uh, of categories set within it. It may be for simple use of production versus test as label templates, or it may be for more extensive use of different types of templates and different categories. Um, again, code it however you wish. So that covers off our demonstration of KPF integration. It's a very simple process to install into NetSuite via a click to install bundle, similar to installing a, an application onto a, a smartphone device. Um, you will go to the NetSuite bundle store, search FHL KPF integration, uh, and then be able to view the contents of that and install the bundle into your NetSuite account. Would require your configuration options as we've gone through, so an account association and the field mapping options. Um, and then from there, then you can go and associate label templates with items and with work order records and produce labels.